Drones are everywhere. Hi, my name is Vivek and I'm product management and marketing at Azimuth. Today we talk about testing drones. For those who are few who are joining us now, we've done videos in the past that, that have covered drone testing and channel models or the environment conditions to keep in mind for testing drones. Today's video will focus on testing drones using Spider. What is Spider? Spider is an automated RF platform that is modular, scalable, and cost effective. The tests you want to run depend on what you are trying to test. If you are making, the, if you are testing the radio within the drone, the test you would want to run for that would be quite different from the test you want to run if you are a drone manufacturer. If you are interested in qualifying that radio link that connects the drone controller and the drone, in that case you might want to focus more on the channel models, exact channel conditions. In that case, a channel emulator is the right solution. We have some customers doing that today. In other instances, if you're, especially if you are a drone manufacturer, your interest is less in terms of qualifying that link. Your interest is more in terms of understanding how the drone performs once you integrate a module from your, uh, once you integrate the radio module. Spider is the optimal solution if you want to test the performance of a drone with a module in it. So in today's video, we will start off by looking at how you can test the performance of a drone. When I tell test the performance, performance could mean different things. Performance could mean how well are you able to control the drone. Because as a drone manufacturer, you obviously want to make sure that you have a robust link to control the drone. The last thing you want is a drone falling out of the sky because you went out of the range. Other thing, in terms of performance could also be the quality of the video you get back. As you know, more and more of these drones include a video link in them. So performance could also mean looking at how good the video is. Is there any latency? Or is there any uh, loss, packet loss when you're getting a video back from the drone? In today's video, we will talk about how you can test the performance of a drone under typical user scenarios. This could be things like a drone flying away from the user here, flying in circles around the user. We'll start with this simple scenario. Towards the end of the video, we will talk about more complex scenarios, say, you know, how does the drone perform when there are other drones in the neighborhood or when there are other uh, Wi-Fi or other interference sources in the neighborhood. Here is a shielded enclosure. As you can see, we have the drone controller in one and then the actual drone on the other. Why do we need a shielded enclosure? You need a shielded enclosure to make sure that your test results are not impacted by extraneous interference. So one thing to keep in mind, these shielded enclosures have filtered power, filtered ethernet and filtered other kinds of connections. And the reason I'm mentioning that is if you want to control your drone, you want to control your drone controller through um, software, you have the option to do that. And one of the biggest challenges with conducted testing has been connecting to the devices. Now, if I have a drone, it's not like the drone have ex has exposed antenna connectors. In that case, how do you connect to a drone? Many times, people end up drilling holes into a drone or disassembling it, which might impact the performance of the drone. You might have run into the same issue trying to test a phone. Like, I love my iPhone, but if I want to run a test on my iPhone, there's no way for me to do it other than destroying it by drilling holes into it. The solution for that is this elegant NFA, the Near Field Adapter. What the near field adapter does is it gives you a way to connect to devices, even devices that don't have exposed antenna connectors in a non-invasive manner. Each near field adapter connects or magnetically couples with an antenna on the device. Now these are highly selective which means that if I have a device with multiple antennas, each near field adapter will couple with just one specific antenna thereby helping you make sure that you achieve a MIMO connection. So, anyways, coming back to the setup here, what you have is you have a drone controller and a drone, both of them in independent cavities of a shielded enclosure. And both of these, the, the connection between these two goes to what is called an RF channel module. The RF channel module provides a controllable MIMO path. When I tell controllable, it gives you the ability to change the path loss. It allows you to change it over a wide range. 0 to 60 dB. So essentially you can simulate mobility. This also features a bottler matrix. A bottler matrix is important for applications where the signals need to combine with a very specific phase amplitude relationship. 
let's talk in simple terms. In simple terms, if you have a connection, a MIMO connection, you need to make sure that the rank of the channel is preserved. This ensures that not only are you changing the path loss, you're also preserving the rank of the channel. Let's look at the software. What you have here is Directed2. Directed2 is a universal test executive that allows you to control Spider and other azimuth products such as the ACE channel emulators and other elements of your test bed, whether it's an access point, a drone, a drone controller, a handset, software like Wireshark, diagnostic monitors. I can test the drone two ways. One is I can configure the drone for a static configuration. In this case, I have a drone controller that talks to the drone through the RF channel module. Now I can set a static configuration where I might tell the drone controller is 15 dB away from my uh, drone. So that's one way for me to do this testing. Now as you can see, the power of spider is I can tell if I want all the four or multiple antennas on the drone to see the same path loss or set the path loss individually. I might tell one antenna is shadowed by another antenna so the path loss should be higher so you have the ability to do that. This kind of manual control is good if you want to test the performance of the drone under static conditions. If you want to test the performance of the drone under mobile conditions there are two ways to do it. One you can create mobility by controlling the sp controlling spider through the API. Spider has a tickle API that allows you to control different aspects such as the path loss, how quickly you want to uh, want the path loss to vary, how, what the steps should be. The other way for us to do this is through Test Builder. What is Test Builder? Test Builder is an end-to-end -end automation platform that allows you to control the entire test bed. I can control handsets, I can control drones, devices, access points, um, routers, diagnostic monitors, so pretty much anything that has a hook, that has an API or some way for us to talk to it, we'd be able to control it from Test Builder. The way Test Builder works is it comes pre-configured with modules here to do different things. And to create a test case, it's very simple. I just drag and drop these modules in whatever configuration I want. Then I can go and configure these modules individually. Now, in addition to pre-existing modules, you as a user can go and create your own modules as well. So if I want to go create a module to control my drone, I might tell control drone. The beauty of Test Builder, as you can see, is you can create your own modules modules that you use just within your company or within your ecosystem. Once I've created a test case in Test Builder, I can run the test case as is or run it from Test Scheduler. Test Scheduler allows you to schedule tests, multiple tests for execution. Test Scheduler gives you a lot of flexibility. You can choose what tests you want to run, what sequence you want to run them in and when you want to run them. So for me to run a test case, I'm going to pause it first and then I can drag and drop the test cases. So in this case, I have a test suite. I'm going to drag and drop the test suite. This tells these are the test cases that are going to be run. Now, I might tell I want to go add a test case on top of this. So I'm going to go here, pick one of my test cases of interest. I'm going to tell, I want to see how the drone performs when it does a somersault. And then as you can see, you have the ability to choose when you want the test case to run. The power of test scheduler is not only can you m schedule multiple tests, you can generate beautiful graphs out of it and you have the ability to even get notifications. Notifications when uh, a test finishes executing or when, a test fin or when a test fails. What we saw in terms of both the hardware and software corresponds to a link level test where I'm testing the, either the performance of the radio link or performance of the video over this link. Now, Obviously, there are other scenarios that a typical drone experiences. So let's look at a few of the advanced scenarios. One is interference testing. Now, this is, a, this is a very common scenario where you have multiple people flying drones. So how do you test the performance of the drone? How do you test if you're able to control the drone? How do you test how the video streams when there are multiple drones using the same spectrum? 
The way you do it is by using a different spider topology. The initial topology we had was the controller, controller talking to the drone through an RF channel module and by adding a couple of combining modules and RF channel modules, now you have the total flexibility to control how each of these guys, how the controller 1 sees controller 2, how drone 1 sees drone 2 and so on. Obviously there are other configurations as well that you can test. You may tell, I want to test the performance of the drone when I have a Wi-Fi an interferer and as you can imagine if your drone is running on Wi-Fi, uh, there are a lot of sources of interference. Just the access point you have at home could be a source of interference. The last scenario that we are seeing a lot is actually cellular drones, drones that talk to the controller through a cellular network. In this case, we've shown you an example topology where the drone talks to the controller through the network and depending on how far the drone is, it might be of the same tower or sector or different, tower, or, or different sectors. Okay, so in this video, we saw how you could test drones using Spider. As you can see, it's a very elegant system. It's modular, it's cost effective, and very scalable. For more information, please go to www.azimuthsystems.com.